the latest from Ukraine. At least 50 people killed in a rocket attack on a train station, including five children. It's the latest attack on Ukrainian civilians and the country's infrastructure. Our team coverage continues now in both Lviv and Kyiv. My co-anchor, ABC News national correspondent Terry Moran is in Lviv, and then ABC News foreign correspondent James Longman once again for us in Kyiv. James, let's start with you. This attack follows the atrocities, of course, in, from Bucha, where you were, where you saw everything there firsthand. Those attacks sparking more sanctions. Do you expect retaliation? Well, I don't think you can rule it out, Kira. I mean, we have seen at least three other instances where Ukraine looks like it might have attacked Russian territory. Two possible cruise uh, missile attacks and one that looks like it might have even involved helicopters. Ukraine has never confirmed that it was them. They never will. Uh, but I don't think you can rule it out. I mean, 50 people dead at this train station, that number likely to go up. So there could be possibly a military response uh, from Ukraine. They know, they've seen the last three times, if there indeed was them, they, have, they didn't get uh, a military response back. I mean, they have, they're suffering the constant bombardment anyway, so it doesn't make too much of a difference for them. I mean, I think what President Zelensky wants is for uh, a response from the West, which would include, uh, yes, more sanctions, but he wants military help. He's called this a turning point. He says that he wants Russia punished, and by that he means he wants further military help for Ukraine. The battle that the Ukrainians have ahead of them now in the East is more difficult than it has been so far. Because Russia occupies so much territory already in the east of Ukraine, they're in a position where they can better supply, better support their troops. It's not like here in Kyiv, where they were cut off from their supply lines. The Russians thought they were going to be welcomed as liberators, and they were not. But in the east, they have that much more support. And so that is why Ukraine is asking for this help. And I think President Zelensky hopes that this particular attack on the train station might prompt the international community to give him the help he wants. Kira? Well, Terry, let's talk about this train attack with you. It happened as thousands of civilians were trying to flee to safer regions of Ukraine. This train station was a hub for evacuations. Is this creating fear now among refugees? There's no question because this is such a dastardly attack, to use an old-fashioned word. That train station had been announced as a center for the evacuation of people, Ukrainians who are living in towns that, as James was just saying, are going to be the scene of the major battle of this war. The mayors of those towns, the Ukrainian national government, were telling the people in the towns around Kramatorsk, go, get out, evacuate. And that was a hub for people trying to leave what is going to become you know, a, de a desperate battlefield. Russia knew that. Uh, they knew that there were thousands of people trying to get out. And there, there, is, there is no other explanation uh, for a missile that is guided that, under, that, that crashes into the train station like that and kills, except they are trying to terrorize and demoralize the entire population. And I will say, after Bucha, and now after Kramatorsk, there, there is a darkness over this land. In, it's in people's eyes, it's in, it's in their hearts. They're determined, they're, they're, this stiffens their resistance. But this is a hellish war right now, the way Russia is prosecuting it, and they are the victims. So, James, this happened in eastern Ukraine, as we mentioned, not far from Mariupol. Has this region become Russia's new target? I think so. I mean, well, Mariupol has certainly been a target since the very beginning. Uh, we know that city has been under near constant siege. I mean, I spoke to people who, who managed to get out. They had made it all the way to Lviv, and the conditions they told me about then were appalling, and that was something like three weeks ago. So God only knows what people are, are going through at the moment. Mariupol, though, will be very important, as will Kherson, a city not far from there, because Russia has made it very clear they will not leave those cities. So uh, even when the fighting stops, and we have no idea when that's uh, going to happen. I mean, it may not even really have properly begun yet, properly in, in the east. But even when it does, Russia is not leaving those cities. So they will become really, really important part of the negotiation. How does Ukraine uh, negotiate with uh, a country which is not going to leave its own cities? What is the deal going to look like? So Mariupol will and Kherson will be two cities which uh, have a huge amount of focus on them, not just because of the horrific humanitarian toll, which we are yet to really understand, but because they are going to form a huge part of this negotiation. Kira? And Terry, Russia, and James, you know this as well, has denied any involvement in this attack, no surprise. Yet the remains of this large rocket with the words 
for the children in Russian are painted on the side. Uh, that was seen right there on the ground next to the main building of the station. Five Ukrainian children were killed in this attack. Is this just yet another sign of Russian misinformation, lies from the Kremlin, all out brutality with not a care in the world like what we saw in Bucha? I'll have you both weigh in on this. Terry, you want to start? You know, Kira, it seems like to me like they aren't even trying anymore. Uh, their, their attempts at covering these atrocities, at denying that they were going to invade, at, at all, at their, this entire, they're Baghdad bobs now at, at this point. Just, you really can't believe anything. And I'm not even sure they, they really want you to, because I, I think at the end of the day, their aim uh, is to crush the spirit, to terrorize people into giving up, into fleeing the country, to break this country, to break it physically. Uh, with the destruction that they are uh, that they are perpetrating all over this country and to break it psychologically the the, the stress the fear the horror the sadness that they hope will just shatter this country's spirit uh, it's unlikely from what i've seen people seem to be even more determined than ever uh, when when they see what russia is capable of they know this they have a long history uh, with russia and it has plenty of atrocity in it so they understand what's going on i don't think they're scared but it is horrific, and I don't even think Russia minds any more about it. James, Terry, appreciate it so much. Thank you. We'll stay in close touch. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.